Hey everybody, Matt here from Matt's Movies, Music and More, welcoming you to this week's episode of What Did You Think? And as always, my special guest, Andrew. Buenos dias. <laughs> so, as you recall in the previous video, it landed on horror category, and the movie that was picked for horror was Green Room. Now, the movie that is going to replace that on the Twister Spinner for the next um, spin is the 1971 movie Psychomania, a British horror film that we picked. I don't know anything about it, but Psychomania sounds cool. Cool. So, as the spinner landed on the last video on comedy, the movie that was picked for comedy was, and I will give you its full title, The Naked Gun from the Files of Police Squad from 1988. Directed by David Sucker and starring Leslie Nielsen, Priscilla Presley and George Kennedy. So, The Naked Gun. Yes. Had you seen this movie before it came up on the review? And if so, when was that? I'm pretty sure I saw it as a child. But the thing that comes to mind immediately is that in the um, sixth form of the school where we uh, grew up... Um, they must have had a video of this um, in storage and um, in the common room there was a point where it was played almost every day. So um, you know... Not, 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 not necessarily by myself but certainly by everybody there because it was a crowd pleaser. So it is fair to say that um, I had to, sometimes had to, watch this several times. So do you know it off by heart then in theory, word for word? Um, I wouldn't say that, no, because it's been a good decade or so since those common room days. Um, yeah. So d um, watching it for the purposes of this video was a necessary refresher course. Okay. I'm sure as we go through this, it'll all come flooding back. Okay, well, I'll get you to describe the plot in a minute, but I just want to throw in a few facts here about this movie, in which uh, uh, The Naked Gun is actually... And hence its full title from the files of police squad is actually a movie version of a TV series that was made in 1982 uh, called police squad and um, it only lasted for six episodes although only four I think were ever aired because in America um, it just didn't work and yet I've watched that series as a kid and I've watched it ever since a kid and I love it I just think it's so funny if you are a fan of the Zucker Abraham Zucker movie Aeroplane, in which Leslie Nielsen really came to the attention as a, as a comedic actor, because as a as a an actor early on in his career, he was more of a guy that would play baddies, and um, he had been in things like The Poseidon Adventure and um, Forbidden Planet, and um, in Airplane, he he steals the show with his comedy, and hence why they wrote a series for him called Police Squad, in which he plays. Lieutenant Frank Drebin and um, in that you have him and his superior Ed but in the series he's played by Alan North in the movie The Naked Gun he was replaced by George Kennedy um, I think that might have been because of Alan North's ill health because I think he died a couple of years after this movie come out but um, regarding Police Squad why it failed on TV I believe the excuse that was given by US television executives is because it, there's no jokes. It's not, you can't hear any jokes because it relies on visual humour. And um, it's one of those ones that if you're a person who watches TV and binges like I do, if you're not paying attention to this, you will not find it funny because there's so many visual gags. And... That's what I love about that series. I don't know what your opinion is on Police Squad, or have you never seen it? I have uh, rented the uh, video or DVD, so I have watched all the episodes at least once after seeing the movies. So my experience of that is coming to the original series after the movies, which is kind of weird. But um, you certainly strike a chord there with um, what you're saying about uh, sight gags, which I feel will definitely apply to this. Because with that, again, as you said, a lot of people will discover Police Squad through the movie. So um, it won't have the same impact as people who watched it in the small numbers in the 1980s, early 1980s with the TV series. Um, and it's a real shame. But at the same time, I think it's probably a good thing because 
it didn't become a TV series that outstayed its welcome or anything like that because you can only do so much with that sort of premise. But um, I, I, I really love the series, so I went into the movie as a kid with high expectations, hoping it was going to follow suit. So I, this is now where the plot will come in. So can you describe it as best as you can? Well, it's a very short movie and a very basic premise, and you've already described the characters, so I'm not entirely sure how much is left. Um, Frank Drebin's um, partner or colleague, uh, Norberg, played here by O.J. Simpson, discovers something. Yes, these movies have it quite a very small awkward factor or cringe factor that's something that, based on that, that we're going to have problems with nowadays when we watch the naked gun movies and the fact that we have someone who technically is a killer moving on very swiftly um he discovers a conspiracy on board a yacht and gets um, thrown off and nearly killed for his troubles and this is where our heroic, if somewhat bumbling um, or incompetent uh, hero, Frank Drebin, comes into play here to investigate um, what his uh, colleague had discovered. Um, this leads him to the villain, um, a, a respected businessman, played by um, Ricardo Montalban, who is hosting a state visit by Her Royal Majesty Queen Elizabeth. So did and you say Ricardo Montalban? You said Khan. Khan from Star Trek episode, you know, Rafa Khan, Star Trek 2. Yes, I did, Matt. Wow. Yes, I did. Wow. No wonder I keep shouting Khan every time I see him on the screen. Wow. I'm not going to question that. <laughs> um, and the set more important and the secretary, uh, played by uh, Priscilla Presley, Jane, that's it, Jane, the secretary, who Frank uh, establishes, very quickly establishes a romantic connection with whilst he's investigating all this. And um, this leads to, um, co uh, believe, but possible cocaine, but more importantly, mind control. Yes, because isn't there a device within like a bracelet or a watch or something like that? That can trend, that can make someone do something against their will, which think? scientifically doesn't make a lick of sense. <laughs> but this is a comedy. Let's roll with this. But what works about this is that, um, as it does in Airplane and in Police Squad, is Zucker Abraham Zucker really know how to write because they are writing this and are telling their actors very clearly that this must be played not for laughs, this must be played 100% serious, and it works. Yeah, this is it's what going back to what you're saying, and I think a large part of this is to do with the casting of Leslie Nielsen, typically known for being a serious actor as Frank Drebin. It's very hard for people to perhaps understand this now, with, with this and all the spy comedy spoof movies that he was roped into doing. Mm. Mm. since then but once upon a time leslie nielsen was a serious actor people and that was the um hook or the comedy the inherent comedy um inherent in this with all the um sight gags and all the escalating chaos unfolding around him or um, um instigated by him all the while he's keeping a straight face yeah because obviously um when uh, Leslie Nelson, I believe, got offered the part in Airplane. I think he was extremely hesitant about doing it because I don't think he'd ever done um, this sort of movie before. Because this yeah. was quite a, ahead of its time, Airplane, um, with having a, a movie that takes itself seriously uh, regarding its plot, but also at the same time it's completely joke, joke filled. But he did such a great job in it. I think that obviously he got the rapport between Zucker, Abraham Zucker, yeah. and. Um, Hence, when Police Squad got made, I think he was 100% on board with it. And I think it really hurt him, the fact that the series bombed. Because I recall seeing, I think it may have been on DVD bonus features, actually, where he said that, you know, I was heartbroken when Police Squad ended because I wasn't sure how my career was going to be. And as you, as you probably know, Police Squad was made in 1982. But 
the movie, The Naked Gun, didn't even come out until the very end of 1988. Yeah. Uh, so that's quite a long time, and especially f- to make a movie of a TV series that not many people would have heard of or know, that could have been a um, bit of a scary one, because obviously Zucker Abrams and Zucker obviously um, did um, a movie a couple of years after Police Squad, which bombed uh, with Val Kilmer, a very underrated mm-hmm. comedy called Top Secret. Um, so Paramount... I suppose we're taking a risk here um, in the late 80s. So you are, say? The, the more you look into this, yes, it's uh, it fascinates and boggles me that uh, they even commissioned this in the first place and that it works so well. Yeah, because I mean, like I said, I mean, Knife and Top Secret's great as well, but the fact that it bombed, it, it, just, it just puzzles me that they would make another movie of this sort of vein, you know, yeah. and to leave such a gap, it's like three or four years gap. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, this movie obviously struck a chord in America because um, a $12 million movie budget it had, and it went on and grossed nearly $80 million in America alone. But it became one of these cult classic movies, um, a movie that was very profitable for Paramount to the fact that they actually released two additional sequels in the franchise, uh, The Naked Gun, Two and a Half, The Smell of Fear. Yes. And the final one, which came out in 1994, which was... um, the Naked Gun, thirty-three and a third. The final, what was it? The final insult. The final insult. Um, personally, that's my favourite of the three. Um, but is that the one? Be- is that because it's the one with Anna Nicole Smith in it? Um, it may have two reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, jo- I'm just joshing with you. Yeah. But, um, but no, with with um, this movie compared to Police Squad, I mean. Um, as much as I like Alan North in the role of Ed, I think um, George Kennedy steals it here. I think yes. he's great in the role. He's, ne- he's He provides the necessary uh, foil to Leslie Nielsen um, in getting the plot across and um, re- reacting or and being sympathetic to whenever Leslie Nielsen makes uh, a bump screws up like... Um, like when they're over, um, standing over Norberg and saying, "Oh, he'll, oh, he'll be, he'll be back up and he'll be recover soon enough." Yeah, he'll probably be a vegetable, but <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is that you really have to pay attention with this movie. But with the Police Squad TV series, there are a few characters that do um, cross over with the movie. Um, that you've got obviously Frank Drevin and Ed, but you've also got Norberg. So. O.J. Simpson plays Norberg in the movie. In the TV series, he wasn't played by O.J. Simpson. I don't know the guy's name as the actor, but Norberg was actually played by a Caucasian white actor. Yeah. And um, personally, I think that guy did a good job. I think um, O.J. Simpson may have handed at the time um, name credibility because obviously he's an American he's, football he's legend. There, he's there to be the um, name actor who gets uh, screwed around with and punched and thrown into a river and uh, increasingly um, um, screwed over by uh, unintentionally by Drebin. Don't worry, buddy, we'll get you out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't bother me too much that he's in it, but it does make it awkward viewing. I, I personally think the guy from the Police Squad series, I think, could have done a better job as Norberg. But then that's just me. I think he reacted well <coughs> enough to being hurt and pushed around. Um, we'll move on from him, if yes, that's all right. Yes. Um, but obviously you've got another character who's in all three of the Naked Gun movies who's in the series, um, and his, he's called Ted. He's a um, he's the basically the forensic scientist yeah. who works at the police squad, and um, <coughs> he'll do things that, when he's describing things, he goes like, do you want to tell us? And he'll be like, okay... Millions of years ago, the Earth was a multi you know, I mean, like, I no, mean no, no. about this. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and he'll go like, um, it, it, what will happen is he'll be telling the characters something that's going on at the time or whatever. And um, Leslie Nielsen will have like this glass that he's found on the desk with a drink in it. And he'll have a little swig. And then all of a sudden he'll go, here, here, Frank, let me take that urine specimen from you. Yeah. And he'll be like, Pfft. yeah, you know, and it's just so funny. And then and in this movie, a good joke was, let me test this stun gun dart on... Um, was it on Ed? Uh, on, on Ed. <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got um, a guy who, I don't know who plays him, but 
And there's Al as well. Al is a guy who is very, very tall to the point you don't see his head. And in the series, there was like one gag that came up where he had long hair. And he goes like, Al, I don't think that's regulation haircut. He goes, I thought I was trying something different. Or Al, you've got something stuck in your teeth. And then you knock it out and it'd be like a piece of banana or something like that. It just falls out. But he's in this movie too, briefly as well. And then you have a character called Papschmeer. Um, Papschmeer is not in the series, but he's a recurring character in all three of the movies, if I recall. Yeah. But notably more so in number three. Yeah. But what's funny about this movie is that at the beginning of the movie, you've got what look like the world leaders. So you've got people like the Queen, Mikhail Gorbachev. Um, I don't think Ronald Reagan or um, no, these, President Bush was these, there. These are all enemy... Uh, but these are all leaders of foreign nations. That's the joke. So it's a very dated thing now. So if you watch it now, you wouldn't have a clue. But people like... Fidel Castro and Yasser Arafat and people like that. But um, I, I, li- I like this film a lot. Uh, I think um, it, it's it's a film that I can put on and watch over and over again and still enjoy it. I just think it's so funny. I think Priscilla Presley is really funny in this. Um, I don't know if she had much experience in acting at the time, but clearly she's got comedic timing, like with the scenes where she's like, you know... Um, I practice safe sex, and you'd be like, "Really? I practice safe sex so too." And two I. of them are dressed in condoms in the bedroom. They're both game for this. That's what makes this work. And then, like the scene where they're like, you know, they've gone out, and it's like, as as your favourite thing is, it's movie montage time. So they've got yeah. "I'm Into Something Good" by Peter Noon from the Herman's Hermits. Yeah, um, he's singing that song, and all this montage of them like having fun on the beach and doing lots of lots of lovey dovey couple stuff, and then she's like. I can't believe we only just met yesterday. Yeah, we all did this all in one day. And that's something that I love about this movie today with my adults, critical faculties, that um, this is this is not a Friedberg and Seltzer movie. If you know those names, I've probably cringed in fear and embarrassment right now. But um, Friedberg and Seltzer do spoof movies and they approach it from the angle of um, very basic crude angle of um, this is funny just because this is a a film you recognise and that's the joke and that's it. Mm. Whereas something like this and certainly with Zucker, Abrams and Zucker's work is that um, they're not mocking or just copying genre conventions. Um, They understand them. And they know how to play on our understanding of them. And that's what makes the joke work, Mm. like this montage. Mm. So it's kind of like when you watch this, you're watching, um, I suppose... And and sorry to sport about it, the narration, the crime noir narration that Leslie Nielsen does throughout the whole movie. I had to drive to the office and all that. And that does lead to... A car he drives to the office, and then the tent, the seriousness of that scene is punctuated by the car crashing into something, yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah, yeah. does happen like three or four times in the movie, and it does lose a bit of its luster as a result. But no, the point is, is that um, it knows that the movie knows about how crime noir narration works, and what, especially if the character is silently walking through the scene as it happens, because there is that one where he's walking through and he concludes it. And there were questions I needed to answer. Why was the DNA on this? Why was nobody telling me anything? And where the hell was I? Hmm. Yeah, because wasn't he walking for quite a while? Yes. He disappeared somewhere randomly. Yes. And... Um... There are so many funny bits in it, but it, I suppose it's kind of like, um, for, for British viewers here, it's a bit like watching um, an episode of Mr Bean, um, only with some some talking as well, because obviously Mr Bean is more visual humour, yeah. but this is visual humour plus story, and yeah. none of the characters in this movie tell any jokes whatsoever, It's they say the wrong thing, and that's where the humour comes yes. from. And, I was, uh, I was I was going to say Inspector Clouseau also. Yeah, so if you so if you're a big fan of like the uh, Peter Sellers Pink Panther movies, then definitely this is worth checking out because it is so funny. There's so many lines I still quote to this day, like mm. as 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 unpatriotic as it sounds, like 
I must kill the queen. You know, it's just so funny. And then um, things like, um, uh, I think it's some of the funny lines, uh, go for it, Stephanie. And like, extend your left arm, extend your middle finger. <laughs> yeah, the whole, it, did that, that's just glorious. The it's a car chase scene, and he gets into a car, and he doesn't know that the car it happens to be a driving instructor learner car. It st still gets me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, I forgot to mention in the montage one bit I love, which is a little joke, um, um, which is while the song something good is playing and they're smiling. They've gone to the cinema to go and see a movie, and they're both laughing and smiling. Yeah. And when it pans up to what the film was screening, it's Platoon. Yeah. Which obviously at the time, uh, Platoon had won Best Movie, and um, it, it's just so funny seeing Pl them laugh at that. You Platoon know? is not a funny movie. That's the joke. Yeah, and you've got um, a scene at the beginning of the movie where Leslie Nielsen's just got off a plane and um, he's gone up to um, like the press mics and yeah. stuff like that. Everyone thinks I found, it's for I him. Found it. I'm sorry, your your the, your wife um, left for another man. Well, this was all for nothing, wasn't it? You people here, you came here to secure the hero, didn't you? Well, can't you understand how a man can hurt inside? Frank, they're, they're not, not for here. you. They're not here for you. They're for Widow Yankovic, <laughs> who is actually in all three of them as well, yeah. as himself. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I just think they're so funny. And you've got the scene in which um, they're at a banquet and um, Leslie Nielsen's microphone's not working properly, so he's <laughs> borrowed the, uh, the mayor. Is yeah. it the mayor? I think it is, yeah. yeah the mayor's microphone, and he's gone to the bathroom, and you can hear him he going did, to that, the toilet. That is the... That, I think that's the big reason why this movie kept playing in our sixth form common room <laughs> over and over and over and over again every for month for like six months everybody wanted to watch that scene and laugh their sides off yeah I'm in hysterics at thinking about it because you've got the bits where he's like <laughs> but this yeah. is a great moment <laughs> and we are honored to have this <laughs> Sorry, this is unprofessional. No, 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 no. It's a good do it. This is what everyone did back at school. Yeah. But no, it, it, even, it brings me some lovely memories. Even, even Leslie Nielsen's bladder has perfect comic time. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's so funny. It's a great movie. Um, I, I can't knock it. I don't know how you feel in the years since the movie has been, because obviously it's now 2018. This movie came out, what? 30 years ago? 30 years ago, there was uh, Empire Magazine, a respected film review magazine that ran a feature on the 30th anniversary. And that, that did make me go, oh, blimey, it has been that long, hasn't it? Do you think that this film... They did, they put great um, emphasis on the immortal nice beaver scene. Yes, uh, the most famous scene in the movie, probably. But do you think that this movie would work with... Um, a younger generation now because well, I'm not so sure today's generation is brought up on things being quick quicker paced perhaps and more pop culture references perhaps or jokes based on pop culture references and this movie doesn't have that they, they're probably more reared on Friedberg and Seltzer parody movies which makes me cry on the inside as a human being because um Watching this movie, I did have the sense that um, I've done a film studies course, a master's degree in the intervening years, and perhaps as an adult, my critical faculties may have matured somewhat to the point where I look at this movie and I'm ashamed to say my first in instincts were to say, this is a very short movie, this is a very basic movie, um, these are all very obvious physical sight gags movie. But then I thought, well, that's the that's the charm of this. That is the enduring appeal of this, that these jokes are almost timeless or they you can get a good laugh out of them, whatever um, year it is. I do like have, like like the toilet scene. I, I do have a point, though, which I will make before we wrap this up, which is yeah. do you think that Paramount may have made this movie due to the surprising success that Universal had in the previous year with their version of the uh, 1950s TV series Dragnet. 
in which was made as a, a police drama for television. But when it was made as a movie starring Dan Aykroyd and Tom Hanks, it became a police comedy, a bit like Naked Gun, they but not the, as. They spoofed it up. That that is an interesting theory. Good good place. Good good for you, sir. <laughs> yeah, I just think that you know I can see similarities with that because Dragnet is one of those cult movies now, but it was released at a time where it actually did financially well, yeah. and maybe that's why Paramount decided to do it because Paramount had come off a number of movies that had sort of bombed. I mean, I know that their Friday the 13th franchises had started to dwindle a little bit, but um, this this clearly helped them um, get back up there, I guess. You know, and yeah. um, I can't really say too much more about The Naked Gun because it, it just makes me smile so much. And you'll, you'll have this video on for hours because... I can just think of every joke and tell you every joke from the entire franchise, not necessarily knowing which one of the three it's from, because it's mm. it's just so seamless. You, you just watch them as a whole, all three of them. Like you know, that's how I see it. I don't okay. know if that's how you see it. Um, I can definitely see how you feel that they'd all blur in, almost blur into one. Yeah. Uh, not not just in terms of it, they all share the same humour, but. Almost they all are equally good at what they're trying to do. Mm. So, yeah, so, I mean, were you pleased to check out Naked Gun again after all this time? Um, ultimately, yes. I mean, I I know all the jokes, and um, it, like I said, it, it was almost a rude waking up, ec wake, waking up exercise to think, blimey, I am that old, and I, my taste in comedy might have shifted a little, but um, I could still appreciate this for what this is. Great. Well, I'm glad that we talked about it, and maybe at some point, maybe the sequels may arise. It all depends. Depends if there's enough in them that's different to talk about, perhaps. It's the Naked Gun. They're all the same movie. Pretty that, much, that, just different, that's, that's, that's just that's different a, baddies. That might that might be a, a conversation <laughs> worth having off camera, but uh, yes, for now, yes, 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 this is definitely one of the um, comedy greats that you young people need to check out and appreciate um, what comedy is. Yeah. So, I suppose that was Sorry the Naked Gun, that. and I hear it. Yeah, I hear it too. Let's twist the spinner time. Okay then. Okay, so um, let's see what it's going to pick for the next video. It's landed on sci-fi. Oh, so let's check what's on sci-fi. I know you're one of the biggest sci-fi fans out there. Right, the movie it's landed on for sci-fi is Ready Player One. Ah, uh, okay. A new movie starring Ty Sheridan and directed by Steven Spielberg. The great Steven Spielberg. Wow, are you looking forward to checking that one out? Um, it'd be worth evaluating it. I did see it uh, at the cinema this year, and I'm wondering if my t uh, opinion has changed at all. Cool. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next video. So thank you very much from me and Andrew for checking out today's video on The Naked Gun. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends. In the links in the description for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and of course the YouTube channel. So thank you very much and we'll catch you on the next video. All the very best.